We never get bored of looking at pieces of the distant past. Even the most unlikely of ancient objects can be fascinating if it has a story behind it. And every object you're about to see in this video comes with quite the story. Consider this a show and tell, putting you back in touch with the people and places that existed long ago. Our first discovery story is that of four Roman Navy battering rams. They were found in August 2021 and are thought to be relics of the Punic Wars that happened in the year 241 BCE. The ancient weapons were found by a team of marine archaeologists close to Eustica Island, not far from Palermo in Italy. The ingenuity of the design is plain for all to see. Battering rams like these played a major role in ensuring that the Romans emerged victorious over the Carthaginians in the war. In fact, historians have speculated that the rams, known as Roman rostrums, were used in the Battle of Agats. That was the war's final battle and the moment of Rome's triumph. The Greek historian Polybius witnessed the battle, as did Diodorus of Sicily. Both men wrote similar accounts of the Roman fleet sinking more than 50 Carthaginian warships and capturing 70 more. There's a certain poetry in the fact that the Romans eventually defeated Carthage at sea, because in the earlier half of the war, the Carthaginians had such a naval advantage that the Romans were eventually forced to copy the designs of their ships. If the Carthaginians had thought to go a step further and add battering rams, the history books might look very different. There's a 15th century mirror in the collection of the Cincinnati Art Museum in the United States of America. It's been with the museum for years, but until recently, it hadn't been on display since 2017. That changed in July 2022, when Hu Mei Song, the museum's curator of East Asian art, realized there was something special about it. This is actually a so-called magic mirror. When exposed to light in the right circumstances, its reflection reveals a hidden image. To be more specific, it's an image of a seated Buddha. The image is only visible when the mirror is exposed to very powerful focus light, suggesting that it was either deliberately made difficult to see or that the glass has become less reflective over time. Now we know that the mirror contains the image of a Buddha, we can finally make sense of the inscription on its back. The inscription says Amitabha. He's known to have been an important figure in many schools of East Asian Buddhism during ancient times. It's thought that this form of art was developed during China's Han Dynasty era 2,000 years ago and later spread to Japan. For such a tiny creature, the bee has had an enormous impact on the human race. We use bee honey, beeswax, royal jelly, propolis, and pollen from bees for various purposes. Honey is arguably the most common bee-related product, but beeswax runs at a close second and has been used by humans for at least 4,000 years. We can say that with certainty because of this ancient Egyptian tunic, which is in the Egyptian Museum of Turin. The incredibly well-preserved tunic has been dated to the end of the Old Kingdom era, some 4,000 years ago. Tests were carried out on the tunic in 2018 and revealed that beeswax was used to help give the linen robes a dense pleat. It's because of this dense pleat that the garment has been able to survive for such a long time. The tailoring technique used to create the garments is ingenious even by modern standards. With the seams minimized between the central body and the sleeves and the pleats turned half up and half down. Without the use of beeswax, creating and maintaining these perfect folds would have been almost impossible. We've all seen ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs before, but very few people will ever have seen as many ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs as there are on the wall of the temple mortuary of Ramses III at Medinet Habu, which is on the western bank of Luxor in Egypt. Most historians agree that the temple was built somewhere between 1186 and 1156 BCE. There are thousands of hieroglyphs at the site, but fortunately, we're able to translate them thanks to the discovery of the Rosetta Stone. The most famous passage of the translated text is known as the Sea People Inscription and reads, The foreign countries made a conspiracy in their islands. All at once, the lands were removed and scattered in the fray. 
No land could stand before their arms from Hatti, Kod, Karchemish, Arzawa, and Alashia on, being cut off one at a time. A camp was set up in Amuru. They desolated its people, and its land was like that which has never come into being. They were coming forward toward Egypt while the flame was prepared before them. Their confederation was the Peliset, Cheker, Shekelesh, Denyen, and Weshesh, lands united. They laid their hands upon the land as far as the circuit of the earth, their hearts confident and trusting. Our plans will succeed. As fascinating as the text is, nobody's sure whether the events described by it were real or mythological. The Maltus Monument in Turkey is already a fairly well-known structure to archaeologists. The 2,700-year-old monument had been studied so extensively by the end of the 19th century that we assumed we already knew everything we were ever going to know about it. In August 2021, we found out just how wrong that assumption was. We now know that the rock-cut site is three times deeper than we ever thought it was, extending several stories below the ground. And that's not all. The monument is sat directly on top of an even older Phrygian temple. The discovery was made during an emergency excavation project that was intended to help preserve the monument, not to find out anything new about it. The remarkable find came as a total shock to everybody involved. The temple, like the monument on top of it, was cut directly into the rock. It's probably 3,000 years old, and perhaps even older than that. The fact it's carved into the rock is significant because the Phrygians believed that Sibyl, their mother goddess, literally lived inside solid rock. Carving a temple into it would, therefore, have been like cutting into her body. Excavating the temple will be a slow and delicate process, but work is underway. We've seen a new focus on archaeology in the United Arab Emirate of Sharjah in recent years, and that focus is starting to bear fruit. In July 2021, experts from the Sharjah Archaeology Authority announced the discovery of a 2,300-year-old jar full of ancient coins. All of the coins were minted and circulated in Malia, and are thought to have been inspired by and based on the coins that were brought into the region by Alexander the Great and his series of Seleucid successors. The faces of gods and legends are printed on the surfaces of the coins, including Hercules and Zeus. If you want to get technical about it, the coins belong to the Drachma Quad category and are correctly known as Tetradrachma. A total of 409 coins were discovered in the jar, all of which are made from silver. 387 of them are single-sided molds, with the remaining 22 double-sided and so presumably worth more. Malia is known to have been one of the most important cities in the Arabian Peninsula during the pre-Islamic period, owing most of its prosperity to the fact that it was conveniently located next to an oasis. In early 2021, a mysterious blue glass bottle was found between the legs of a female skeleton unearthed at the site of the old Trinity burial site in Hull, England. Inside the bottle was a strange brown liquid. For understandable reasons, archaeologists were reluctant to open the bottle and assumed the liquid to be urine. In July 2021, a different theory emerged. The woman was buried in 1783, and it was common at the time for people to be buried with keepsakes and personal items. Why someone would choose to be buried with a glass bottle bearing the inscription Hull Infirmary on its side wedged firmly between their legs is a little puzzling at first, but it's now thought that the liquid inside the bottle is a phosphate-based tonic drink and might have been given to the woman, who was around 60 when she died, as a treatment for her osteoporosis and rickets. Tonic drinks like this were commonly sold as cures for many medical ailments at the time, including tuberculosis. Either the woman insisted on being buried with the bottle because she was so attached to it, or her loved ones thought the best thing to do was bury her with it because they didn't want to touch it after she'd used it. The Croatian island of Havar is already of interest to archaeologists and historians because of the 17th century palace that stands there. In June 2021, they found out 
that the palace was built on top of something far older. Beneath the front garden of the Baroque Radosevich Palace is an ancient necropolis dating back to the 4th century, containing 20 graves and the remains of 32 individuals. Also in the graves was a collection of coins, ceramics, pottery, glass bottles, amphorae, and oil lamps. Some of the graves are simple, but others are impressive structures, almost like mini temples with roof tiles. On balance, perhaps this discovery shouldn't have been so surprising to the experts. Hivar is known to have been occupied since the Illyrians settled here 2,800 years ago, and was also home to the ancient Greeks and Romans many centuries later. The Venetian Empire still used it as a naval base as recently as 1776. Twelve of the skeletons in the necropolis were found in a single tomb, walled in on all sides by stonework. Despite the grand nature of some of the tombs, the identities of the deceased are unknown. The sunken Egyptian city of Thanis Heraklion continues to give up its long-lost treasures a few pieces at a time. The city was once the largest port in the Mediterranean, but it sank for unknown reasons 2,200 years ago and might even have been the inspiration for the myth of Atlantis. Thonis Heraklion was rediscovered in the year 2000, and marine archaeologists have been diving down to extract artifacts from it ever since. The most recent treasure roundup was reported in August 2021 and includes ancient Greek ceramics and, remarkably, several 2,400-year-old wicker baskets that still contain fruit. It's thought that the site that the discoveries came from is an old Greek funerary area known as a tumulus, so the fruits, which include grapes and dome fruit, were likely to have been a funerary offering rather than anything intended for human consumption. Archaeologists and historians continue to disagree over what ultimately caused the sinking of Thonis Heraklion, with some saying it was caused by a landslide, and others feeling that the city simply became too heavy for the clay it was built atop. When Tel Aviv was built in 1909, it stood atop the ruins of countless previous cities, towns, and settlements. When Polish Jews arrived in Tel Aviv in 1923 to set up the district of Ramat Hasharon inside Tel Aviv, even more of the past was covered up. In August 2021, we found out how far into the past the history of the region goes when an ancient farmstead was found underneath a new residential development. Archaeologists at the scene said that the farmstead is about 1,400 years old, having been founded during the Byzantine era and remaining in use until the 11th century before becoming abandoned. That's 1,000 years ago, so it's amazing that there's still so much of it here. Researchers have found a wine press with a stunning marble mosaic floor, chandelier chains, and a coin minted in the year 638. The chandelier chains are an anomaly, as such an object would usually only be found inside a church in the 7th century. The coin is also a little strange, having apparently been signed by its owner. Maybe they were very attached to it for some reason, perhaps because it had been a gift. It's hoped that the farmstead will be at least partially preserved within the new development. On the Scottish island of Orkney, there's a 5,500-year-old tomb that's slowly falling into the sea. Nothing can be done to save it, so archaeologists face a race against time and nature to discover its secrets. Recently, they found two delicately carved and polished stone balls inside the tomb. They don't know why the balls were made, but they join a collection of around 500 of about the same age that have been found all over Scotland during the past century. There are many competing theories about what the stones were used for, but no conclusive answer. Some historians say they might have been fishing weights. Others say that they're projectiles for use in hunting. The lack of flaws or markings on the stones makes both explanations unlikely, though. So the idea that their sacred heirlooms passed on from one generation to another might be closer to the truth. There was a Neolithic settlement here at Kata Sand 6,000 years ago, but no balls have ever been found there. The placement of the balls inside the tomb must mean something, but we don't know what. If you're trying to give a ballroom, a restaurant, or even a room inside your home an opulent feel, 
you'll need a chandelier to achieve the effect. That's as true in the modern era as it seems to have been 2,000 years ago, when this Roman chandelier hung inside a grand villa in Spain's Elda Valley. The priceless artifact was discovered in August 2021, and is said by archaeologists to be the only complete Roman chandelier ever found. Obviously, it wouldn't have held light bulbs, but the spaces around its perimeter would have been filled with candles or perhaps oil lamps. After putting the shattered pieces of the chandelier back together, experts noticed that the name Lucius Eros was engraved on its side. The same name has been noted on several other artifacts that have come from the villa. Nobody can be sure whether Lucius was the person who owned the villa or whether he was the person who made the objects. If it's the latter, then this is one of the earliest examples of product branding we've ever seen. Subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and enjoy watching new videos on my channel. Thanks for watching and see you soon!